Tony asks, what do you think that Nintendo can do to win back younger gamers? I feel like the current Nintendo fan base is not made up of kids, but of adults who grew up playing their games and now keep coming back to Nintendo because of nostalgia. It seems like kids these days tend to play either mobile games or Minecraft, uh, and as we get into the future, fewer and fewer people will have nostalgia for Nintendo games they probably never played when they were younger. Or is nostalgia not that important for Nintendo? Uh, so I got a few thoughts on this. First of all, I want to say I'm like 90% sure that Tony uh, tried to add me on Facebook and I declined because I had no idea who he was. So <laughs> sorry, Tony. Uh, feel free to send that again. Um, so uh, yeah, I have a few thoughts on this. Um, yeah, I think you're right that you know Nintendo characters. There's not as much power to the Nintendo brand as there used to be. There's not as much nostalgia sort of driving their sales as there used to be. Right, and certainly not within the younger generation. And I think mobile games are one way that they can uh, they can help introduce more young gamers to Nintendo IP. Miitomo has been, been strong so far, but it's not the kind of game that's going to make anyone say, oh, I need to go get a 3DS, I need to go get a, a Wii U because I want more of this. So I think they can do a lot better job of leveraging their IP to the large base of young gamers on uh, mobile platforms. Uh, and then I think another thing is to just attract people to consoles is that they need to start creating new IP that are, you know, revolutionize games or at least get gamers excited the way that games like Mario and Zelda and Metroid did back and in the day. Splatoon and Splatoon I think now. Splatoon... Yeah, hey. Yeah, I was going to say, Splatoon is an excellent start. And it, you saw, you know, it sold 4 million copies on Wii U, which is phenomenal for a new IP on a... Uh, a system that is not sold for crap. <laughs> but I I think, you know, you have to have a Splatoon-style game, like, every year or two, not, you know, once a console generation. You need, like, three or four Splatoons for your new platform to, to really start drawing in new mm -hmm. crowds. So I would really like to see Nintendo, Nintendo uh, create more new IP like Splatoon. And then the other thing is just a stronger marketing presence, because, like I said, I think the Nintendo brand has been weakened a lot in recent years. Mm -hmm. And Nintendo's talked a lot about doing that, about expanding into films and, and uh, TV shows and theme parks and things like that. But so far, there's been a lot of talk and not enough action. So I think Nintendo just needs to take a lot of different steps to sort of revitalize that brand and be more than just a, uh, a slowly declining video game company. They need to make themselves relevant again. Right. And I think in particular, you're talking about the films and stuff. I think that's where they're really going to find the most demonstrable success for the least amount of work. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, kids are already going to animated well, you movies know, I think you time. look at all the shovelware games that come out every year. If a movie is successful, even if it has a crappy tie-in game, it'll still sell, you know, a, a decent amount of copies. And Nintendo actually makes right. good games. Right, so exactly. Video game tie-ins with successful movies would, I think bring in a lot of new customers and especially yeah. young customers yeah um and especially if they start out by you know doing stuff like i can't count the number of times we've talked about mario's gonna be in wreck it ralph 2 on this show but stuff like that um you know i think getting their toes in the water there that would start getting people interested in the brand again and then that's probably when they're gonna look at more seriously um doing like a really really heavy uh push for, you know, films and stuff like that. Yeah. Sort of tangentially related to the idea of putting themselves in the way of these, like, big media franchises that kids love, uh, one really simple thing that they could do, and one thing that work has been really successful for them, but also their competitors more recently, is make sure you get those really popular games on your platform before their mm -hmm. heyday is over. Yeah. Uh, NES had Tetris, NES had tons of arcade ports, NES had, at, toward the end of its life, tons of PC ports. Uh, well, but it also Game had Boy. the most popular games of the day. It had Mario, it had Zelda, it had Duck Hunt, it had Mega well, Man, Final Fantasy. I'll move on to the Game Boy, which basically sold on the back of Tetris when it launched. Um, mm -hmm. So, And then, uh, to choose a more modern example of something Nintendo missed out on, they missed out on Minecraft. They yeah. only just now, like five or six years, five years later, got Minecraft. Xbox had a Minecraft on lockdown when it first came out, and Minecraft sold, what, like tens of millions of copies on Xbox? So Nintendo needs to make sure they're not missing the boat on these franchises that are popular among really what should be their crowd. Uh, Minecraft was popular among kids. Uh, back in the day, Tetris was popular with, with women. Uh, so they're they're getting a lot of audiences that a lot of traditional uh, publishers and the other platform holders don't really prioritize typically.
Hello everybody, thank you for listening to this Nintendo Week Clip NWC. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more highlights and discussion videos from Nintendo Week Podcast, or subscribe to us on iTunes for weekly breakdowns of all your Nintendo news, discussion segments on subjects, games, and more, and tons of other features. Thanks for listening, and we will see you tomorrow with another NWC.